The SDGs, as you read them out, uh, speak about poverty, hunger, health, education, mm -hmm. uh, gender, they speak about clean water and sanitation. They speak about uh, affordable and clean energy. Um, when it comes to affordable and clean energy, um, you realize right now the world is transitioning uh, into cleaner sources of energy that reduce the pollution that is caused, uh, that, comes up, that brings about global warming, that has uh, adverse effects on, on uh, our environment. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, basically, all aspects of our lives are enshrined in the Sustainable Development Goals. Even picking up from uh, uh, number eight, which is decent mm -hmm. work and economic growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, currently most young people um, uh, do not have uh, sustainable ways of earning a living. And uh, the SDGs come as a guideline to ensure that even the opportunities that come about from the different sustainable activities that we engage in mm -hmm. actually provide uh, decent work that provides income mm -hmm. to um, uh, the people involved, not only young people. I came across someone during um, uh, a sustainability event yesterday is, uh, uh, and he told me, uh, why are we focusing on young people? Yet the SDGs mm -hmm. also, you know, involve everybody. Everyone, yeah. yeah, the thing is, uh, we all, they affect us all. Mm -hmm. However, it's um, for Champions for SDGs, we, uh, we are a youth-led organization that focuses on young people. However, when um, adults express interest to participate in our sessions, mm -hmm. we actually welcome uh, them to join and be part of it because we acknowledge that um, um, they also have experience mm -hmm. working in the different areas of specialization and we can tap onto that. And that is where SDG number 17, which is on partnerships, mm -hmm. comes in to um, uh, speak about partnerships for the goals. Um, we can we are able to benefit in one way or another they can benefit from our innovativeness uh, to come up with uh, um, current solutions that uh, solve current issues mm -hmm. however they, they are also able to assist us with uh, the wisdom of experience in certain areas mm -hmm. related to the SDGs yeah. uh, currently um, we have a global concern on uh, uh, climate change and uh, that is addressed under SDG number 13 which is climate action and uh, um, this is one of the major issues that um, the, the, the things that we do uh, even uh, when we are at home um, actually contribute to adverse effects to the climate uh, um, and it seems like we might actually um, uh, get into a place where mm -hmm. um, the future generation has been compromised. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the definition of sustainable development, it's actually, uh, it uh, speaks about um, being mindful of our actions right now okay. so that we do not uh, compromise the future. Uh, the future generations. All right. So how can one, you know, in participating in uh, the SDG for climate, how can we be mindful of that as a youth? How can we participate in that? So there are many initiatives uh, one can participate in. Uh, mm -hmm. They can be um, uh, planting trees. They can be um, being mindful of usage of, for example, sing single-use plastics. Uh, recently, we've seen that our country banned mm -hmm. single-use plastics which usually end up uh, in oceans, um, endangering the lives of marine life and even affecting um, one of the other SDGs, which is life below water. Okay. So there are basic things that you can do at home. You can do things like reusing the tins that uh, you buy. Uh, um, for example, uh, if you buy s uh, a plastic, uh, an, an item that was packaged, in a plastic material mm -hmm. that can be reused for something else, you can reuse it for that. So that 
contributes to the circular economy. There is a concept called the circular, the circular economy, economy yes. whereby um, mm. something can be reused mm. or, or, or actually you, you, you take care, you can, you can use certain things to do other things that can be of benefit to you, mm. to earn an income or, or do other things. All right. Yeah. And now how is tech and SDGs related or what is the role of tech in promoting sustainable development goals? All right. Um, tech falls under SDG number nine, mm -hmm. which is industry, innovation and infrastructure. Yeah. Um, uh, let me take you back to when the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic came into, into the world. Yeah it actually accelerated technology for everyone mm -hmm. um, and that the uptake was really fast mm -hmm. uh, you you saw how we were able to, tra to transition from physical activities to to virtual activities things which um, didn't used to be possible uh, people were able to actually do them and at uh, even at a lower cost sometimes mm -hmm. where travel was uh, involved booking of uh, um, resources uh, and so on. So technology has come in in that way to connect the world, mm -hmm. um, to provide a platform where um, young people can innovate uh, and they can, for example, earn something from their innovations. And uh, also uh, let's look at uh, education, for example. Um, again, because uh, of the pandemic, people were able to uh, start learning online, uh, mm -hmm. doing virtual classes, for example. Yes, I know in our continent, we have a challenge of infrastructure. Yeah. And that is something else that we need to address. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure in terms of uh, devices to connect people to the internet. Um, there is that challenge. and. Uh, if we can address that challenge, we can be able to tap into the power of technology because we've seen it through um, those devices which are available. Those people who are able to access technology um, uh, actually got more connected, were able to access resources, mm -hmm. were able to learn and, and uh, do so much more. For but example, at Champions for SDGs, mm -hmm. in 2019, um, in March 2019 when we started, we uh, used to do physical activities in town um, until 2020 when uh, uh, that time came we had to transition to virtual um, activities so that is when we discovered uh, the platform which we used zoom whereby we could uh, even um, get the text uh, text um, appear on the screen for people, for example, who, who cannot hear and, and, uh -huh. and be inclusive of everyone else. So that also speaks about SDG number 10. Um, mm -hmm. So when we came back into the new normal, uh, we've adopted a hybrid model whereby um, people can join. And yes, and people online. can join virtually or they, they, they can come physically. In right. case you are a speaker, you can speak uh, from where you are as long as you have a device and a connection to the internet. Mm -hmm. um, same goes for a participant. You can actually join from anywhere. Where All you right. Are. Yes. And now, where does uh, what has uh, so far? Because some of the things we have seen in tech, we have AI, we have uh, Internet of Things, we have blockchain technology. How have they helped? Uh, uh, those, if you look at uh, innovations that come as a result of uh, those, they can be used as a source of income for, for the innovators. Mm -hmm. They can be used also um, for connectivity. Mm -hmm. uh, um, basically, the, the, the solutions, all the items that you've mentioned about technology, mm -hmm. they contribute to uh, helping things happen for example, faster mm -hmm. and more conveniently in, when it comes to even payments that happen electronically. Um, so technology has improved the speed of, of doing certain things. 
-hmm. and uh, making, making, for example, things that are used to be done uh, physically that cause uh, pollution, they no longer happen. So you realize uh, the levels of pollution calm down. Okay, yeah, but so uh, still, yeah. as you know, people say that also technology is causing harm to the environment, like the, uh, you know, like blockchain technology, for instance, the machines, you know, getting into the ocean and everything, it's causing harm to the environment. So how, how does it, uh, how do we, as much as we embrace it and put it in part of the goal, how do we prevent it from, you know, getting out of hand? All right. Uh, thank you for that. So, when it comes to uh, electronic devices, mm -hmm. uh, we are all advised to be mindful of how we dispose uh, our devices when they are no longer useful. Um, because uh, you realize that electronic waste, uh, sometimes if disposed uh, carelessly, can become a hazard, mm -hmm. a hazard to Even different life. people mm -hmm. who stay close to the dump sites, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. If it's um, batteries, if it's uh, things, uh, things that uh, um, uh, certain uh, metals or, or, or things that do not easily uh, decompose, mm -hmm. they can cause physical or even slow uh, health issues to people who stay close to places where they are disposed. So there are some initiatives that have uh, come up with a way of uh, recycling electronic waste. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes even the manufacturers of the devices yeah. advise people to return uh, those devices which are no longer useful. Um, so there are those simple actions that you can take as, mm -hmm. a, as, a, as a citizen. You can yeah. uh, be mindful of how you dispose those devices. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you can reuse them or if they are still active, mm -hmm. still useful. You can give them to people who, who, who can use them. Okay. So basically reduce um, uh, the disposal, be mindful of how we dispose that. And even when we are acquiring the, acquiring the devices, uh, let's see whether if we really need it and, and, and then uh, use it well. And then uh, these days um, there are things that, for example, electronic uh, devices which can be charged. Um, if you remember, there used to be batteries or cells um, that that are used in electronic devices such as mouses, computer mouses, with, for example. But these days, you you see that they are rechargeable mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. So you can consider options that are more 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 sustainable instead instead of buying mm -hmm. uh, those cells which you after some time you dispose, they are going to become a hazard, they are going to pollute the environment. Um, instead, you can Take consider buying options. something that you can re recharge. Okay. Yeah, so okay. that is something more sustainable. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And uh, uh, somewhere uh, on your website, I read that you are very passionate about SDG number four, quality education. Why? I'm very passionate about quality education because I think it's the foundation mm -hmm. of all the other goals, of, of the things that we are able to achieve in, through all the other goals. Um, if we are not aware of, of how the, uh, for example, of the importance of coex coexisting peacefully with our uh, neighbors, with other neighboring countries, uh, with different people, that is addressed by SDG number 16. Um, we, we would end up being in chaos if we are not aware of uh, um, eat, eating healthy, for example. Uh, we are going to end up sick or mm -hmm. end up with sometimes life cell diseases. Uh, so education kind of forms a foundation for me okay, for, for us to be able to achieve all the other goals. All right. If we are aware of um, mm -hmm. the importance of respecting diversity, Mm -hmm. we wouldn't um, uh, bring about inequalities in how we treat others. Mm -hmm. This is addressed by SDG number 10. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And still on education, yeah. what uh, what do you say about the new st statistics that uh, Kenya is ranked number three globally with the highest number of teenage pregnancies with 98 uh, teens getting HIV infections weekly? Um, so basically that uh, means that uh, if we are having high rates of uh, teenage pregnancies, that means that possibly there is no uh, information on, uh, on ways, on, on how um, people can take care of themselves, be mindful of, of the actions mm -hmm. or, or, or act safely mm -hmm. in case they engage in sexual activities. So, um, for instance, if, um, if there is an issue with uh, new HIV infections, mm -hmm. there are methods that uh, um, can be used to, to reduce those. For example, by um, educating the youth mm -hmm. on why it's important uh, to, to either uh, behave responsibly as young adults. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So now, um, in Kenya, what mm -hmm. are some of the wins that we've had with the SDG goals? What are some of the things that we are way ahead uh, in terms of achieving? And what are some of the things that we still fall behind and we need to put more efforts into? Yes. Thank you for that. So, um, as our as a country, we've mm -hmm. been able to achieve quite a number of things, mm -hmm. and uh, mainly it's because of multi-stakeholder. Uh, partnerships have happened to be part of um, the multi-stakeholders uh, mm -hmm. engagement uh, that is concerned with the sustainable development goals yeah. and uh, this involves other sectors such as the private sector academia mm -hmm. other civil society such as us um, that's the STC mm -hmm. the SDGs uh, unit uh, uh, by the government mm -hmm and uh, even the media. Uh, so um, as a country, our country has reported um, during the, the high level political forum. So what happens when evaluating the SDGs, mm -hmm. member countries of the United Nations ask to uh, report on their progress on achieving the goals mm -hmm. during the high level political forum, which happens in uh, New York, um, uh, every mid-year. So our country has reported twice. Mm -hmm. So that was in 2017 and 2020. In case you are able to access the internet and then you search for voluntary national reviews for Kenya, you'll see two of them. Mm -hmm. so, so those ones uh, share progress that our country has made. So our, uh, there, there are other countries who have reported more times, others less times. So um, where we are where we are at, mm -hmm. I, s I have seen that there have been multi-stakeholder partnerships towards the SDGs. I've also seen that uh, different stakeholders are aligning themselves towards the goals. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy about this. And I encourage everyone else to actually align themselves towards the goals and look at the specific targets and uh, see how you can contribute to the progress that we can make towards that. There is still so much more to do. Even when it comes to 2030, mm -hmm. I'm not certain whether we'll be able to achieve all the targets. Okay. Yeah, however, uh, we are optimistic that to when it comes to that time, we'll have made significant progress right. uh, towards the, the, the goals. We, the, there is um, uh, um, a lot that has been done. Uh, however, there is still so much more that we can do, and especially if we can do it together. Okay. Yes. All right. So now I want you to tell us, as we come to a close on this particular conversation, you're very knowledgeable about uh, these SDGs and you're very passionate about them. So how did you, what is your story? How did you, I know, I know the story about <laughs> this book. So yeah, how did you come to be the ch a champion for SDGs? All right. Um, so that was in 2017. Mm -hmm. 2017, I attended a workshop. Um, uh, it was about um, media. It was about communications mm -hmm. um, for civil society organizations and uh, uh, speaking about issues of reproductive health. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, after this workshop, the facilitator had two of those booklets mm -hmm. and uh, she requested uh, that she can actually award one of those to one of the participants um, who will give a good reason why they should be given the booklet. Mm -hmm. um, two people raised their hands and spoke ahead of me. Uh, those were adults. Uh, they gave their reason. Uh, when it came uh, uh, to my time, I was the third person. I raised my hand and then said, um, that time I was, uh, I was 20, 21. I was uh, a no, few yeah. years, uh. yes. Uh, I've just passed my adolescent years. In the 21, two yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I told them, I'll be here long enough to see the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development um, coming into uh, actual actualization. So I deserve this booklet because I'm the youngest person who gave the reasons. <laughs> so, okay, I got the, the book yeah. straight away. Mm -hmm. I went and shelved it. Yeah, mostly when we go to workshops and conferences, sometimes we get those reading materials and then we shelve them. I did exactly that for a year. In March 2019, I kind of was disappointed with an internship that I was doing. I was not absorbed and um, I, I was looking for something meaningful to do. Uh, and, and while looking through my stuff, I came across that booklet. Mm -hmm. I read through it, I found the issues very current. And uh, I thought, why not um, um, come up with an initiative to educate other young people like me on this agenda? Um, that is how I brought together three of my colleagues. So we were four in total. Mm -hmm. uh, we sat somewhere on the grass and then we planned out what we'd like to do with the SDGs. We organized our first meetup session. Um, as a team, and then we organized uh, information sessions there on, as, uh, generally speaking about the SDGs, and then later on we uh, continued to host many more um, physical mm -hmm. sessions, webinars, mm -hmm. and later on hybrid events on, on uh, sessions on the SDGs. Wow, amazing. I just yeah. love how you've been able to keep this book for yeah, yeah, yeah. since I love that book and I'm going to keep it so well <laughs> because oh. it always reminds me of where how I have you come started. From. Yes. Uh, and why are you so, uh, finally, why are you so passionate about uh, this goal, the SDG goals, and why does the person watching you right now need to be a part of the initiative? Um, first of all, I happened to be a young person when when I came across this and 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 they felt something that I have uh, a mandate to actually mm -hmm. uh, do something about it and uh, even even though I, I know I have studied um, mm -hmm. technology now that I'm so passionate about this I went in and did so so, so much online mm -hmm. uh, courses where I um, accumulated knowledge on this topic mm -hmm. and I would like our viewers to also um, in case you'd like to learn more about the sustainable development goals mm -hmm. uh, you can check out globalgoals.org uh, um, read about them and also during our upcoming information sessions um, for the SDGs we usually uh, give out the SDGs booklets uh, such as the one which I'm holding uh, right here. This one's we've approached the uh, State Department for Planning, which houses the SDGs unit, mm -hmm. and they were kind enough to give us these booklets, which they have uh, uh, with them. And these booklets have uh, a summary of what the agenda is, the, mm -hmm. the goals, and they also have the 169 targets. Okay. So uh, they also ha speak about follow up and review mm -hmm. and different mechanisms that happen at national, regional and global levels. Mm -hmm. So um, you might think that the SDGs are far off, they have nothing to do with you, but the SDGs are part and parcel of your life. Mm 
So get to know much more about them and uh, align yourself to the goals and let's um, uh, together achieve a sustainable future. Amazing. Yes. So where can people get you if they want to reach you? Or so maybe your organization? Yes. If you go to Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and uh, Facebook, you can search for at champions number four SDGs and then you'll come across our page which is called champions for SDGs youth mm -hmm. and um, myself you can find me on LinkedIn my username is Arnold Gekonge Thank you very much Arnold for coming and sharing uh, great light on the SDGs Thank it's you so much awesome for having, having you with us all right, so that has been Arnold Gekonge, who's a champion for SDGs, and you can get uh, you can get them on social media at this handle, Champions Number Four SDGs. And of course, we have been talking about SDGs and how they benefit us, and how we can be part of this great initiative, right? Yes. Yeah, so that's the end of Sport on Tech, but we are just starting. Valentine will be coming with some great entertainment interviews. Don't go too far.